Hey guys, it's Tim Miller uh, with ETM Video, and today I wanted to do something a little bit special. Last week I posted a picture of downtown Athens at the courthouse, and I did a tilt shift blur effect. And um, I thought it would be fun to show you how I did that, to also go over a little bit of my process when I'm editing aerial photography in Lightroom. Uh, so, you guys are still awesome, you guys are still great, and I just figured this would be a fun video to do, so I hope you enjoy. It goes a little long, but it's very informative. All right, so here we are in Lightroom. I figured it would be a good idea to uh, show y'all my process uh, and uh, how I go about creating these things that I create. So, uh, last week I posted a picture of a of the courthouse downtown Athens, and uh, I applied the tilt shift effect, I like the tilt shift effect blur effect uh, because it makes things kind of it's the way it makes things look so it looks like a kind of a miniature and it doesn't quite look real and it looks over real at the same time so I just like the way the look that it gives uh, aerial images uh, so this is what I've got going on I've got uh, I've got my picture of my downtown area right here and uh, what I do when I shoot with the drone I shoot in AEB and what that is is auto exposure bracketing and it takes three to five images back to back so click 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 I like to do five because it makes uh, for more exposure so just to show you what I'm talking about uh, I'll take five images so I dial in my exposure to what it looks good through what I can see and then uh, it will take and slightly underexposed slightly overexposed lot underexposed heavily overexposed so it takes these five images starting from and eh, okay exposure slightly under slightly over a lot over a lot under and um, it gives you a lot more control over what's going on with the image so what we'll do is we will control click the five images in question we will right click and open this drop down here which is the photo merge HDR which is high dynamic range and that is what we'll click it does its thing it generates a preview uh, the high dynamic range is, is just like it's just getting your highlights and your shadows and everything just perfect I've got the auto align on here uh, and the auto settings which you know it sets these settings you'll see these uh, it sets the settings where uh, like my exposure contrast shadows highlights and all those things to what auto would do if you just hit the auto button what the computer best thinks the image needs and sometimes it's right sometimes it's not but anyway so you'll see these uh, red dots over images and what that is is ghosting is uh, moving images when you do the AEV uh, if things are in motion it'll pick that up and what that does is it calculates what the best still part of that image is and moves it to the forefront which doesn't necessarily affect your image that bad unless you have a lot of motion and which case the AEB will not work so we'll go ahead and click merge because these cars here are really the only thing that would be in question when it comes to ghosting and I it doesn't look like I would have a very much a very big issue with those cars so that's cool uh, <clears throat> and here we go so 
here is my uh, high dent my uh, HDR image AEV is compiled all of my exposures and it's given me uh, clean shadows light the exposure the the whole uh, the highlights and all that and everything my image looks relatively clean so now we're going to go over here to my toolbar and uh, we're going to scroll down and just you know go over some of what this is my process of when I'm editing images when I'm doing drones for real estate uh, or drone photography aerial photography when I'm doing that for uh, real estate uh, for a client for myself for whatever this is uh, some of the things I do I always shoot in AV so what we did we had the auto so this is what the computer best thought fit for this image after it was compiled together and I like to go ahead and take all the highlights down completely uh, there's a time and place for everything I skip the white balance white balance is super important I like to find a image in a uh, click over here get your dropper tool your selector and find a part of the image that is supposed to be white and select that and you will get a automatic uh, white balance you also have uh, you can do as shot and auto which is auto white balance it's a little bit warmer than what it would when I selected the white from here select the white from over here on the courthouse and it cools it down just a little bit more I like this this looks good so we'll move on uh, my exposure I think I'm like a, like the 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 um, HDR does a really great job of finding that sweet spot in the exposure you know I like a little bit more contrast in my images it's uh, it's more lively or more colorful uh, the shadows look good the whites will bring those down just a little bit uh, this presence over here I don't like to mess with the texture very much because you see it's all the way up you know it's kind of almost too much you know there's a time and place for all these settings to be way high or way low um, I wanted to, if I wanted to soften the image way down uh, I'd use the texture I use some of the, the brushes and the, the uh, spot removal the red eye all these things the uh, gradient filters uh, radio if I wanted to like control a certain spot of the image I could and da, da, da. if I wanted to get rid of these cars all together I could but we're, that's, a, that's a different tutorial um, this is my process so I like the dehaze effect just a little bit see this is the the haze of the the image uh, so I give it a little bit more life and we'll turn that texture down just a little bit uh, now clarity clarity you can damage your photos if you use too much especially if you're uh, if you're shooting people uh, I find that it gets it kind of blacks out the eyes a little bit and kind of ruins the image in my opinion some some cases it may you may want to use a lot of clarity I'm not gonna mess with the tone curves because that's just a, that's a different animal all by itself you can do a lot of uh, crazy things when you mess with the curves uh, but you know that, that would be another tutorial all itself uh, I'm not gonna mess with colors or none of that the highlights uh, we are gonna add some uh, sharpening we're gonna bring that up just a little bit uh, cool thing about sharpening is if you're on a PC uh, you can hit alt uh, there's a there's a Mac button I don't use Mac but you know you hit alt and hit the slider and you'll notice it goes gray and that's the areas that are being affected by the sharpening so you get my radius here and bring that all the way up and I can see what that touches and that that's really cool uh, the detail see what it what it affects and what it doesn't affect uh, and it makes using the selector so much so 
I like to bring the mask all the way up because you see how it gets my lines and everything just just right. Uh, noise reduction, uh, all this, I don't really use that unless necessary. So we're just going to skip that. Uh, I'm going to click these two here. Uh, chromatic, I can't stand this word. I always mispronounce it. Aberration, the chromatic aberration is uh, so if I had like a lot of light or a lot of color that was bleeding through my image that would uh, that would help pull that up but this profile corrections is I click this the Lightroom recognizes that I shot it with a DJI Phantom 3 it picks the camera it finds everything that uh, best suited for my lens and it corrects that so you know straightens out all these other unnecessary things uh, so you can see it change again kind of like a uh, flattens it out so it's not all round it kind of kind of flattens out the image so those those are kind of the basic things that I like to uh, use you know just a uh, a quick rundown of what you can do with those uh, like I said they get the colors and everything I've wanted to change the colors or alter the colors or in any way I've got the saturation you know cut down on the reds cut down on the orange we will make the blue strong and stuff like that so there's different things that you can do with the image that you don't necessarily have to worry about in this tutorial so we're going to continue moving forward with the tutorial we're going to do a little crop because right here the courthouse is what I want to bring attention to in this particular tutorial in this particular uh, game uh, it's not a game it's a, it's a workflow but we're gonna we're gonna bring that courthouse dead center for this tilt shift for the next part of this tutorial uh, brought it up just a little bit uh, now we're going to need to go to Photoshop how do we do that you might ask we're going to go up here to photo we're going to hit over here where we were in merge photo before we go edit in edit in Adobe and then the 2020 is just the version that you're working with so if you're working Adobe 2019 you know you'll see that but bam we're going to click that and what that is going to do is it is going to open up Photoshop for us it's going to say hey bro here's that Photoshop you were talking about uh, now while that's doing that uh, and you can see here's some of the things that I've edited the past uh, see I've already done this I've already done this uh, last week so some different things but here's our image that we just now corrected we have moved from Lightroom to Photoshop now we're still in Lightroom so whatever we do in Photoshop once we save it it will do that in Lightroom so that's pretty cool so there's no need to uh, touch up this image we've done all that in uh, Lightroom so we're going to go up here to our filter we're going to find blur gallery and we're going to hit the tilt shift and that's going to give us this which is pretty much already done for us uh, we have this entire blur gallery opened up over here on the right. Uh, so if we wanted to mess with different types of blurs, it's all here. Uh, so we've got our parameters. This is the amount of blur in the image. If you see, I can drag it all the way up and get really weird with it. Or I can, you know go all the way down which wouldn't make any sense because that's why we're here to blur this image a little bit so now uh, 
the distortion you see what that does a uh, little bit a lot so a lot of times tilt shift is golden right out of the gate so and you've also got these lines and bars over here this is your uh this is where your blur starts begins and ends right here so if i wanted to bring the blur all the way up here i could and this is also i rotated it a little bit uh pushes it back this is where my detail uh my finer detail begins so uh so we're going to have a little bit of a different image than what we had and i like to move it just a little bit diagonal you see over here when i go to move it, it tells you how many degrees i'm turning um i like to go along with the street over here uh push the blurs around or whatever this little slider right here is that slider to your right you see how i can adjust the amount of blur in my image right there so there's that let's go ahead and bring him up just a little bit a little bit more this way all right so the tilt shift is pretty much solid right out of the gate but i like to you know mess with it explore see what it does see how i can make it happen and uh that's pretty cool huh so like i was saying before if i hit control s i'll apply my blur all that'll blur uh boom there's my image in Photoshop. I'll hit Control S to save it. And what that will do is it will give me a saved photo here in Lightroom. And that kind of gives you that uh, train station like the uh, the miniature model town look which I, I think is really really cool uh, so that's pretty much it other than rendering it out and posting it for all my friends to see but I did that last week so I guess that isn't really necessary but I think this may be a better tilt shift than what I previously posted and uh, but yeah if you like this tutorial if it was helpful at all or if you just enjoy seeing the process uh, give me a thumbs up and uh, I might do this you know in between you know just show you my process show you what I've learned show you some of some of the programs here like you've got so much that you can do in Lightroom that you can make the images look so much better uh, than before. You can do so much to the images that it's it's just really insane the amount of control you have over an image inside of Lightroom. So uh, if you like this tutorial, let me know, and uh, we can do more. I would I would love to do more tutorials for you guys and let you see my process, see what's going on. But if you, I am a licensed drone pilot, so if you know anybody that would benefit from aerial photography, uh, pass this video along. Let them let them know that I that I fly professionally. I'm licensed and insured. Two very important things to have in a drone pilot. So. Uh, well, I'll let you get on with your lives. Uh, you guys are awesome. You guys are fantastic. Let me know what's going on in your life. Let me know uh, how things are going. And uh, we'll see y'all next week.